Combine, and in this talk we will review the current state of the art of function programming in these fields. But first, some uh, words about me. Yeah, my name is Johan Sretter, and I'm currently studying um, for the master's degree in software and systems. And I've done a seminar work on today's topic, and this talk is the final presentation of it. My advisor in this seminar work is Barat Mehta, who is probably uh, known to some of you. And yeah, this might also be the, the reason why I'm allowed to stand here in front of you and uh, present my talk. So thank you very much for this thank opportunity. Thank you, Andreas, for letting us host it here. Well, what I'm going to talk about. Um, I have divided the talk into six parts. Uh, to start off, I want to give you a brief introduction and some background information. Then we will take a look at function and programming in different fields in web front-end development, web back-end development, and mobile development. In the front-end part, there will be a short uh, and simple example to show how a front-end could be realized using function programming. And last but not least, uh, I will try to uh, explain the findings of, of the seminar work and of the, of the current state of the art. And after the presentation, you are invited to ask questions and perhaps to, to share your own experiences in, in these fields so that we, that we all learn as much as possible. Well, let's start with the introduction. Um, since the beginning of programming, the way of programming has continuously changed. And at the same time, so-called, or different so-called programming paradigms have evolved. And these programming paradigms have a significant uh, influence on the further way of programming and on other programming languages. And one of these paradigms is functional programming, which you all know a lot about, I guess. And yeah, but there are of course other paradigms, so the question arises, which paradigms will or which paradigms can establish or enforce themselves? But um, regardless of any paradigm, the importance and the popularity of uh, web development or of the internet is uh, growing massively. And in this chart, you can see the number of internet users um, over the last years. So, yeah, the values are given in millions. And, yeah, you can see web development is becoming more and more important. And the same applies to uh, mobile app development as well. And web development is not only rapidly increasing, but also a very fast moving field of programming. And often it takes only months until a new uh, web framework or a new uh, programming language for web development or even a new web technology appears. And these conditions, the importance, the increasing importance and popularity on the one hand and the fast-moving environment, on the other hand, these conditions could be the chance for a programming paradigm to establish itself in this field. Yeah, and uh, while doing a review, there are different questions. For example, <coughs> um, what functional or which functional programming solutions already exist? for functional programming in web and mobile development. What are the advantages or disadvantages of functional programming for these fields? And how widespread is functional programming in these fields? Or what influence does um, this uh, programming paradigm have in these fields? And of course, uh, how does the future looks like for functional programming in web and mobile development. 
Let's see if we can find some answers uh, to these questions. But first, I want to give you some background information about the different uh, um, aspects of functional programming and web development and mobile development. First, uh, functional programming. I, I, I assume that all of you or most of you have already a lot of uh, knowledge about functional programming, but as a little reminder, I've, I have uh, listed here some fundamental features of uh, functional programming. First of all, all data is mutable, and functions are pure, so functions are handled, or functions have no side effects, they are allowed to only access the data that are that is passed as arguments and functions are first class values and are handled in the same way as normal data types such as numbers or strings. Functions can also be higher order taking another function as argument or returning a function as result. Then Functions with uh, multiple arguments can be transformed by carrying into multiple functions with a single argument and any form of iteration um, such as while or for is achieved using recursion. And these fundamental features will help us later to or with the analysis of programming languages. So functional programming is clear, but what about web development? Uh, web development is concerned with the programming of web content, from uh, simple websites to uh, complex and extensive web applications. And web applications can be roughly divided into these um, different types of architecture. The, the distinction is based on the questions of, or on the question of where does the content is rendered. So, in the first architecture, the server-side web app, um, all content is rendered completely on the server side and transferred from the club from the server to the client as a final HTML page. Um, in the second architecture. In a widget web app, um, the content is again transferred from the server to the client as an HTML page, but uh, individual areas in the page can be loaded or updated asynchronously uh, from the from the web from the client side. And in the most modern single page web app, there is a fat client and containing some business logic and the rendering and there is a thinner server um, which is responsible for the for providing the pure data as or using an API and while previous websites um, are composed of only one single component that uh, that one on the server side, the more modern, the today's common single page web applications are composed um, of two different uh, components. The first component is the front end, um, that's the component on the client side, and that's where the uh, visitor can interact with, and that's what the visitor can see. And the other component is the backend on the background of the server side which is responsible for uh, data access so that's the exchange between for example the front end and the database or yeah don't have to be a database but something like this and if we review the current state of the art regarding function programming for web development these both components have to be considered separately for uh, their own. Yeah, and from the mobile 
Um, uh, from the web development, we can move to the mobile development. This chart shows the market development over the last years, the last 10 years. And you can see here that the market was very balanced in or until five years ago. But now, today, there are two mobile operating systems which uh, cover almost the entire uh, market of mobile operating systems, Android and iOS. And this situation is, um, yeah, is positive for web developers because web development can focus now on these two operating systems. Android is the mobile operating system developed by Google for yeah, for mobile devices and is by far the most uh, popular operating system and iOS is developed by Google as a mobile as an operating system for Apple mobile devices only so enough um, background information let's start with the current state of the art what about functional programming for web front-end development well, uh, concerning web front-end, everything seems to be about JavaScript. And JavaScript <coughs> uh, runs in all major browsers and is the most popular uh, programming language for web front-end development. And in fact, JavaScript was originally uh, supposed to be based on a functional programming language. But uh, this idea was discarded before the, the development began in order to be more attractive to Java developers. And yeah, as a result, in the end, a uh, multi paradigm programming language was developed and um, combining the best aspects of different um, programming paradigms and functional programming is one of them. So, yeah, it's all about JavaScript. So now we can check how JavaScript performs with regard to the fundamental features of the functional programming paradigm. In JavaScript, um, you can define a variable as uh, immutable, and there are also uh, immutable array functions, for example. However, uh, modifying a variable is still more common in JavaScript. Then, yeah, functions in JavaScript are allowed to access external data without further ado, so um, side effects are not prevented in JavaScript. But um, JavaScript functions are first-class values and can therefore be higher order functions. Um, Curring is not intended in JavaScript, but uh, could be implemented by hand ex extensively, but could be. And recursion is of course possible in JavaScript, but um, normal loops for um, while or for the for loop are still dominant in, in JavaScript. And as you can see, there are many aspects which maybe are possible in JavaScript, but are, have to be implemented extensively by hand. And therefore, some JavaScript libraries have made it their goal to provide this service and extend JavaScript with, with some easy to use functional features. Uh, there are just some of them, some uh, common ones, but of course there are some more. And that's one approach. And uh, uh, to other approach, then um, there are, um, JavaScript is very dominant, so there's no way around JavaScript. And that's the reason why some transpilers have emerged that do not replace 
JavaScript, but compile another existing functional programming language into JavaScript. For example, BuckleScript uh, compiles OCaml into JavaScript, and same is for some other um, functional programming language, and yeah, there might be more other uh, transpilers, of course. And the last approach is to um, develop an independent programming language like Elm, LiveScript, Opa, or PureScript, but they again compile itself into JavaScript. And especially noteworthy is the programming language Elm, which uh, not only uh, allows to, to compile in, a, in JavaScript and HTML and CSS for the design, but Elm also allows to, to build an entire front end. And that's why we take a look at an Elm example. It's a short and simple example just to show how a web front end could be realized using functional programming. But first note the architecture of Elm. The model view update architecture was especially developed for Elm. There's the model which corresponds to the state of the application. The view is the way to render or to display the state and update is yeah, it's the way to, to update the state and updating is triggered by a message. And this is how our simple uh, example application looks like. And it's a to-do application for managing tasks. So a, a task can be added or removed again and its done state can be toggled. And there, a little comment um, for the sake of simplicity. Uh, the design was or is completely omitted. Um, but let's go through the through all code sections. First the model, or first of all at the top of the file the module and its export, exported function main are defined. And then the import of all later needed modules and their attributes or their functions in brackets follows. And then some type aliases and types are defined. The type alias item corresponds to a single task containing a label and the done state. The type alias model corresponds to the whole state of the application containing an item list and an editable text for um, adding a new task item. And then there's the type msg message for or which contains all possible user actions. And the data types behind the user actions indicate that, for example, the user action remove item requires the index item, uh, the, yeah, the item index as a parameter of the format init. And the last one is the initial model, where the desired values are assigned to the initial model of the in, to the initial state of the application. It's a uh, an empty list for items and empty text for new tasks. Let's continue with the update part. Um, the update part is defined as a function and the function receives the user action as parameter msg and the current state as parameter model. And then it performs some uh, modifying actions and returns the new state as a new model. So for example, if the, if the text for a new item is entered, only the text property of the model is updated. If a new task is added, 
then the existing array is um, extended by this new item and a new array is generated. If remove item or if an item is removed, then all other items before and after the affected item are merged into a new array. And if an item or if a task is toggled, if the done state is toggled, then the, ex the existing array is mapped into a new one whereby only the toggled state of the affected of the affected item is changed or is yeah, negated. All other items um, are still the same. That's it from the update part. The next part is the view part and it's then a function. And this is how the display or how the view is generated um, with the use of um, some HTML functions. For example, input and button can be generated using this kind of syntax. And as you can see here, there are two uh, user actions we are assigned that are assigned to, to the events on input and on click of these HTML elements. So if you press the button add item, then the user action add item is called. And there's another function um, called view item, and this function is responsible for generating the uh, subview for each um, single item row. So with the use of list.index.map, this subview is generated for all items which are exists which exists exist in, in the row. And again there's the use action remove item and the parameter index so that we know in the update in the update function which item is to remove. Yeah, those are already all parts of the architecture and now it's finally um, time to uh, specify the main function which uh, gets exported. And the web application is composed using the, func the function browser.sandbox whereby the initial model, the, the view function and the update functions function are passed as an argument. Yeah, that's it. That's all code which is required to, to realize a simple uh, web program. And then there's one command to initialize the project and another to build the project. And the result is a simple HTML file containing JavaScript. So, uh, from the front end, Let's switch to the web, uh, web backend. What about functional programming for web backend development? Um, yeah, the situation on the server side is quite different from that on the client side. While uh, JavaScript is definitely the, the leading technology in front end development, in the backend development, different um, web frameworks have established. So you can see here a list of uh, different web frameworks for backends for different non-functional programming languages. So these are the classic backend frameworks. And yeah, of course there are many more, but just to um, show some of them, for example, it's even possible to realize backend using JavaScript. And then on the next slide here, you can see a list of um, web frameworks for functional programming languages. And again, of course, there are many more, but yeah, maybe you know some of them. You have already here some, for example, of Haskell. There are many different um, web frameworks and yeah as you can see the variety of um, 
web frameworks and the way of backend development does not differ uh, noticeably from general programming. And therefore, the, the subject of functional programming in backend development corresponds to that on general programming. And therefore, um, this part is not considered further in more detail. But what you can uh, note is that there are many, many um, web frameworks for non-functional programming language, but also for um, functional programming language. So let's switch to mobile app development. Functional programming for mobile. Well, first, Android. Um, <coughs> to, in order to um, develop an Android app, a uh, suitable programming language is required. And the first official Android programming language was Java. And Java is still widely used for Android apps. But two years ago, Google announced Kotlin as the second official Android language, Android programming language. And yeah, Kotlin is a new and modern programming language that also compiles to Java bytes code. So as a long-serving programming language, Java doesn't, doesn't really have extensive functional features. So it makes more sense to to take a closer look at Kotlin as the designated uh, Android programming language of the future. However, Kotlin is still an object-oriented language. Anyway, let's check how Kotlin performs in, with regard to the fundamental features of functional programming. Again, um, in Kotlin, a variable can be defined as immutable and strings and lists are immutable by default and for classes there are or there is a copy method which allows to simple, simply clone an object but again uh, modifying a variable is still more common then Kotlin functions are not prevented for side effects so Pure function or not all functions functions don't have to be pure in Kotlin as well. Um, Kotlin functions are first class values and can be higher order functions. That's positive. And again, currying is not supported out of the box, but could simply be implemented manually. And recursion is then possible, and there's even uh, an optimization for tail recursive functions. So, as you can see, Kotlin has many improvements um, compared to other programming languages like Java regarding the support of functional programming features, but um, additional libraries are required to follow the, the functional programming paradigm in a more powerful way. And one such library is Arrow, which is promoted as functional companion to Kotlin standard library and allows to, to write pure Android, pure functional Android apps. And Arrow is the result of the fusion of the two popular um, Android libraries category and Funktionale and is therefore certainly a good choice for functional Android deployment and uh, development. So let's move from Android to iOS development. Um, nowadays Swift or the, the programming language Swift is mostly used for developing, de developing Android, uh, iOS apps and 
Swift is a multi-paradigm programming language whereby um, functional programming could also be an important part. So let's check how Swift performs with regard to the fundamental features. Um, Swift prefers immutable data types. So um, most of the fundamental types of Swift have both uh, an immutable and a mutable variant, whereby the, the mutable one is um, inheriting from the whereby the mutable one is inheriting from the immutable one. And <coughs> um, there's an approach called um, copy on write to only make deep copies if really needed. Then Swift comes with um, function types that enable first class functions and high order functions and Swift natively supports um, curing out of the box. Recursion is again possible but not yet so common um, but there's also the possibility of tail recursion optimiz optimization. <laughs> and yeah, as you can see, Swift supports more function aspects, uh, aspects than other programming language, and this is also or this can also be seen in the fact that there are almost no additional um, functional libraries for Swift. So, but there's not only Android and iOS. Often, an app should not be only uh, realized for Android or for iOS, but for multiple platforms. And that's where cross-platform frameworks comes in. With the help of a cross-platform framework, you can uh, realize mobile apps for different mobile operating systems using a single code base. And as you can see here, there are uh, many classic classic uh, non-functional programming, uh, non-functional cross-platform frameworks from well-known companies like yeah, Cordova is by Apache, React Native by Facebook, uh, Native Script by Telerik, Flutter by Google, Xamarin by Microsoft and so on. So really well-known company which are competing in this market. And of course, there are not, not many, but a few uh, functional cross-platform frameworks. For example, Lambda Native, um, which is a cross-platform environment written in Scheme, which is um, which can be used for cross-platform development in or using F sharp in combination with Xamarin Forms. Yeah, that's it with the um, possible or with the existing sub solution. So solutions. So now let's um, discuss the answers for for the question at the beginning. First, which functional programming solutions exist for um, web and mobile development? As you have seen, um, for web frontend and web backend, several libraries and uh, programming languages or frameworks exist. But for mobile, there's, the situation is a little bit different. For Android development, uh, the, the Kotlin library Arrow is certainly a good choice for functional Android uh, programming. In iOS, there is not yet a functional um, solution to replace or to improve Swift. And in the cross-platform environment, there are only a few um, frameworks trying to enter the market. Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of 
function programming for web and mobile development? Well, due to the, or there are, there are many advantages of function programming in general programming. And these advantages also apply to, to web and mobile development. First, due to the uh, descriptive nature of function programming, the code becomes more concise and clearer, and the code behavior more predictable. And uh, due to the absence of a shared code and side effects, function programming is suitable for concurrency. Then, fewer functions uh, lead to, or should lead to easy testing, and all in all, functional programming should lead to less programming errors, and this in turn should lead to stable, to, or to more stable systems. And as web applications and mobile applications are accessible to public, um, and are easy targets for potential hacker attacks, the, correct, the correctness and stability should be of very high importance. So functional programming should theoretically be perfect suited for um, web and mobile development. But of course there are also disadvantages. Um, for example, Immutability might be a positive um, approach, but with larger data structures, um, cloning data um, could have a negative impact on the, on the performance. And another disadvantage could be the, the, the lack of awareness and dissem dissemination, what for example means less tools or, or less support. The next one, um, how widespread is function programming in web and mobile development and what influence does function programming have? Well, whether in web frontends, in, in web backends, in Android apps, iOS apps, or cross-platform apps, it can be stated that pure functional programming solutions have only a limited popularity. Um, the predominance of of other paradigms, or mostly of object-oriented programming, are yeah are too dominant, and functional programming cannot yet compete with this paradigm. Not yet. Um, the situation regarding the influence is quite different. Um, functional programming is yeah has has many advantages um, regarding or for web and mobile development, so functional programming has increased in importance and has found its way into many non-functional programming languages, as you have seen uh, before. So, what's the future by, or how does the, or what does the future hold for functional programming in web and mobile development? Um, at the moment, today, yeah, object-oriented programming might have the lead, or has the lead, but functional programming has many advantages and is really suited for 